So you have decided to buy property at Lake Anna. Good choice. Well, from a local real estate agent, here are seven things to be thinking about when you're approaching your decision to buy real estate at Lake Anna. Number one, do I wanna live on the public side of the lake or the private side of the lake? What's the difference? Well, the first main difference is who has access to the lake. The public is just that. Any member of the general public, whether they live here, whether they live here or not, can have access to the public side of the lake. The private side of the lake is very different. Private side, you have to be a property owner or have permission from a property owner to access the lake. Now, what does that mean to you? What that means is volume of boat traffic. The public side is gonna be much busier than the private side. The second thing to think about the difference between the public and the private side is commercial activity. Commercial activity is allowed on the public side. We're talking about restaurants, bars, marinas, those are allowed and you'll find those on the public side. Those are strictly prohibited on the private side, so you don't find any of that on the private side. Personal choice. The third major difference between the public side and the private side is the water temperature. Water temperature on the private side is 10 to 15 degrees warmer on average than the public side. So those are some of the key differences between living on the public side and the private side. Number two, do I want to live waterfront or water access? Waterfront, water access. What do those terms mean? Waterfront means just that. My property is right on the water. Just like this, this particular piece of property is sitting right on the water. Water access means you're a few blocks away, your property doesn't physically touch the water, but you're close enough to the water to say walk to the water or ride a golf cart, but you're not touching the water. Uh, your waterfront properties are gonna run from about $600,000 up into the millions. Your water access properties uh, are much less expensive. You're looking in the mid 200s up to 500 and 550. So you've got waterfront versus water access. Number three, which county do I wanna live in? Lake Anna actually sits in three different counties, Louisa County, Spotsylvania, and Orange County. You're gonna find that Louisa County is a little more liberal with their rules. They're a little more relaxed than Spotsylvania and Orange. You'll also find that Louisa County has much lower property taxes than Orange and Spotsylvania. Number four, water depth. If you plan on doing some boating, water depth is a very important issue here at Lake Anna because the water depth does fluctuate sometimes by a foot or two. At your boathouse, wherever you're gonna be parking your boat, you want at least four or five feet of water depth at the back of your boat where your propeller is to allow for proper clearance. If you're planning on diving off of your dock and doing cannonballs, jumping off the roof, you probably want at least eight or 10 feet of water depth. So make sure to check the water depth when you're looking at properties. Number five is land. A piece of property without a house on it. You can still find it here at Lake Anna. You can find lots on the water and you can find the water access lots that are off the water. One of the more important things to think about when you're looking for a piece of land to buy is soil. You wanna find out if the soil work has been done on it. You see, all of the land out here, everything is done on septic systems. There's no city sewer, there's no city water. It's all done on septic systems. And to install a septic system, you need a certain type of soil. So there's a test that's done to make sure that the soil is good. Before you buy the land, you wanna make sure that the soil is good. So you can ask the seller, hey, do you have any soil reports? Has the soil been tested? Or when you go under contract, you can make your contract contingent upon a period that allows you to do your soil testing. You don't wanna buy a piece of land and then later learn that the soil's bad, you can't put a septic in, and then you can't build your house. The other thing to be thinking about if you're just looking for a piece of land, if it's a waterfront piece of land, again, you wanna think about what we talked about a minute ago, which is water depth. You wanna go down to the water, and wherever you're going to build your boathouse, 20, 30, 40 feet out, you want to make sure that you have that depth, four feet, five feet, eight feet of depth to put your boathouse. And remember to account for the fluctuations of water, small fluctuations of water, the depth of the water that does happen here at Lake Anna, a foot or two each year. Number six, HOAs. Do you want to live in an HOA or do you not want to live in an HOA? You can find both here at Lake Anna. There's over 150 subdivisions, some very small, some very big but you can find HOAs. The HOA fees are not very expensive down here, typically 10, 20, 30 dollars a month, or you can find some homes that are still in non-HOA. Another thing to think about. Number seven, which is very important, your boathouse. Your boathouse. If you live at the lake, this is where you're gonna be spending most of your time, so this is very, very important. One of the most important things to be thinking about with your boathouse is the size of your boathouse. The power plant, Dominion, they regulate what happens on the water. So they regulate the size of your boathouse. 
The size of your boathouse depends upon how much water frontage in feet you have. The rules are this. If you have between 100 and 300 feet of water frontage, you can build a boathouse that's up to 2,000 square feet in size. It's pretty big. If you have more than 300 feet in water frontage, you can build a boathouse that's up to 3,000 square feet in size. But these are important things to be thinking about if you plan on building a boathouse or if you're buying a property that doesn't have a boathouse yet, take note of how much of the water frontage because that's gonna dictate how large your boathouse can be. The other thing to be thinking about your boathouse, especially if you haven't built one yet, is the location. Don't build your boathouse right in your beautiful view of your water and block it. We see this happen over and over and over again and I think, why? Why did you put your boathouse there? Make sure to think about strategically where you're going to build your boathouse or have your builder build your boathouse in relation to your view from your house, from your back deck, because that's what you're paying for. That's what you want to be where you're drinking your coffee in the morning, looking at beautiful Lake Anna. Put the boathouse off to the left, put it off to the right, but don't put it smack in front of your view. And one more little extra tip, we'll call this 7B. If you're building your house, think about the lots to the left and the right and the front and the back. And if there are no houses there yet, find out where can a house be built? Because we see it happen time and time again. Someone builds their house and then two years later, all of a sudden, uh-oh, a neighbor builds a house and their house is actually closer to the water and it starts blocking your view. So really take the time to think about, if you're building your house, where are the houses around me? Where are they built or where they can be built? And is it gonna end up blocking my view in some way or creating a situation that I don't like? Really think through that. So there you have it. There's your seven things or your seven and a half things to be thinking about, things that you should be thinking about when you're buying property, looking for property here at Lake Anna. My name is Grayson Hoffman. I'm a local real estate agent with the Ashley Hoffman Group. If we can be of any assistance, give us a call.